and welcome to the Bristol Music Show. Loads coming up on today's programme, including drum and bass artist Exposure, who gives us an insight into his own record label ahead of its first ever release on Friday. And we catch up with Fen Lilly as she takes residency at the Gallon Malfrey. But as you can see, I'm outside the Island Complex in Bristol City Centre and I'm about to head downstairs to Sellotape Studios to join Susie and the team who've been filming two live sessions. So later on, it's the turn of psychedelic duo High Climbers. But now we're going to check out the first ever live performance from Death Caves. <laughs> was it? How was the first ever gig? Yeah, really, really good. Like, yeah, really exciting. Fun. Very nerve-wracking, but uh, yeah, good fun. It was, a, it was an unusual first gig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you had a lot of cameras yeah. in your face. Yeah, 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 in the deep end. But um, <laughs> yeah, good fun. Thanks to Death Caves for sharing their first ever live performance with us and we'll be back in cellar tapes later on in the show with psychedelic duo High Climbers. First though, Fen Lilly is currently taking residency at the Gallim Malfrey, sharing the stage with three of her favourite Bristol artists. I popped down to the first gig with Oliver Wilde to have a chat and ask how she chose the headliners. So Ollie, who's Oliver Wilde, who's um, doing it tonight, <laughs> is the only reason I carried on writing music, so that's a nice thing to be able to do. And then, um, yeah, so just people I've supported or met while I've been living in Bristol. Why is Oliver Wilde the only person that um, kept So when I was like 15, I put a song on SoundCloud and he found it somehow and then emailed me and told me that I should do some gigs in Bristol because I was living in um, Dorset. 
and I emailed the Louisiana and were like, let me come and do a gig. And they were like, when you're not really old enough to play upstairs, we'll put you in the cellar. And it was Alad who booked me for the gig and now he's my manager. And all the people from that night that played, I'm now friends with. So it's like a pretty important moment. That's amazing. So yeah, it's really cool. Smile like before. Top to toe reached over two million yeah, hits so on Spotify weird. recently. It's How so does weird. that feel? It's bizarre. I don't really. It is. I just see the numbers going up, and it's like, oh wow. So once it got to a million, I was like, that's incredible. And now every number that's added, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I guess like when I stand back and think about it, to like not two million people, but like it's been played that many times, and it was a song that I wrote. I think that was the song I put on SoundCloud for the first time and I didn't think anyone would ever hear it, so it's kind of, it's weird. You'll miss feelings always change like this, but you are all the words. Do you feel like you've got quite a lot to live up to now with your next single? I'm really scared. <laughs> I'm really scared. So tell us what's next then, because you've got quite a lot of festivals, loads of festivals yeah, coming up, I've right? Got, yeah, I've got tons. Got um, playing Latitude and Larm Tree and Farm Fest and stuff like that, and then I'm going to do a few European festivals at the end of the year in Italy and uh, Amsterdam and places like that. And then I guess just releasing the next single and getting an album together is like the next step, which is all in motion, so it's good. Do you feel ready for that? Um, it's always a scary thought, like having so much because these songs have been written over like three or four years and they're all really important, really mostly sad bits of my life. So to have them all in one place getting listened to and judged is a pretty terrifying thought, but I guess, I don't know, just get my manager to delete all the negative comments that are on the song when it goes out, I don't know. I guess when you've got um, music that you've had for so long, it must be, do you, do you get bored of listening to the same song and kind of working with it? Or do you get like kind of, quite emotional I, about I it? I got told off for a, a gig that I played where I was like, I'm really bored of these songs, but they're all new to you guys. So, and, um, and then, yeah, they were like, you can't say you're bored of them. And I guess it's, there's an element of like, I've played it so much that it kind of loses a bit of meaning. But also every time I play it, I get put back into that mindset. So it's kind of just like, yeah, it's quite, um, yeah, it is emotional, but it's also kind of like I've got used to everyone knowing what I'm feeling now, so it's like... <laughs> it's out yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. So we're here at the galley, and it's the first night of your residency. You've got two more to come. I know you can't announce the last one, but can you tell us the next one? Yeah, it's Going Dogs. Cool. So, yeah. And one of your favourites, right? Yeah, obviously. Awesome. Well, good luck tonight. Thank you. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having me. this morning. Won't you take me to your bed? I should have said I need you more. Thanks to Fen for chatting to us, Thank and we can now much. announce that the final headline act who will join Fen Lily on stage on the 19th of July at the Glenham Free is Tammy Massey. All the gigs are free entry with music starting around 9 pm. And now we take a break from our series on music video directors to hear from a Bristol record label about to release its first ever single. Hi, this is Exposure and we're here in my studio in Bristol. I run AR, which is a record label specialising in drum and bass and jungle on vinyl and digital. As well as being a platform to release my music, I'm working with some very talented producers to showcase their work. Although it's not exclusively a Bristol label, all of the artists bar one so far from here, which shows just how much talent there is from the city. I lived out in Brisbane, Australia for four years where I ran the club Night Rescued, and we had some great nights, but I was always called back to the UK. And since moving back, I've realized how fortunate we are to have such a big music scene here. Especially in Bristol, there has always been a strong heritage of quality music from here. There's a night, normally two or three really good nights every weekend, and I feel very lucky to be part of that. So you can check out my debut single, it's called Delicate Lives, it features the amazing Sula May on vocals, and the B-side Sacrifice, it comes out this Friday the 1st of July, and have a listen if you like it, spread the word, share it about, and yeah, check us out, we've got some really exciting music planned, we've got some wicked nights lined up, 
Um, you can follow us on all the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud. Subscribe to the mailing list on the website, it's arorj.co.uk. We'll see you around. a few Bristol artists got up to at Glastonbury at the weekend and we're back in Sellotape Studios for a live session with High Climbers. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Bristol Music Show. Still to come, High Climbers are in session at Sellotape's recording studios but now we ask these Bristol artists to document their Glastonbury experience last weekend and this is apparently what happened. Hey guys, I'm um, Rosina Buck and this is Let's try to find a caravan to call our home today. You bring the cigarettes, and darling, I'll bring the wine there. You can kiss me. If you were at Glastonbury, we'd love to see your photos of any of the Bristol artists you went to see. You can tweet us at BMS on TV. Now, this week, our sessions are coming from Cellar Tapes, a music studio based in the island. I caught up with owner Ben Whitehouse to find out what inspired him to open his own studio. I've always played music and enjoyed DIY music, played in bands. Started to record myself when it became possible to do that with a computer and cassettes, four-track cassette machines. And then I studied music in Falmouth. Then I went to Montreal and was involved in a place called Labrick, which is quite well known there. 
and that was a DIY run space and I got really enthused by that and came to Bristol and I've been here a year now. And how did you find this space? Um, through Bristol's got an amazing network of people of artists of all sorts and it's really quite easy to find initially where the venues are and then to get on mailing lists but also word of mouth Facebook and so an opportunity came up here and Dina, Tina, um, Henry and Zam, the guys have been fantastic. They allow me to lease this space and transform it into a studio. And you have changed it quite a bit as well since you, you came in. It looks amazing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty much all recycled scrap material and, and it's fun functioning really well. Okay. Yeah. And how does it work? Because we all know that Ireland is this huge space in the city centre, mm. but there's lots of different studios here. So there's dance studios, there's music studios, there's art. Do you all kind of work together and do you all know each other or you kind of keep yourself to yourself? There, no, there's an open forum, there's a Facebook group, there's a lot of interaction there. But you're also you know, left to your own devices to do what you want. Um, there's events, there's a huge event space here, which is really cool. They have TV, TV filming, obviously. I do Pilates class on a Monday night. Do you? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Well, we've come to the end of the show for this week, but don't forget you can catch up with us throughout the week on social media. And also, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, we've got loads of exclusive interviews and live sessions on there as well. But that's it for tonight. We'll be back again next week, but we're going to leave you with the high climbers here at Cellar Tapes. But you're from Australia that's true, and yeah. you're from France. Yeah. How does that work? How, how are you creating music together when you're from different countries? Uh, yeah, at the beginning it was just like a way to cu communicate, basically. Yeah, sure. Yeah, couldn't really speak English and yeah, it was just a way like to share like some feelings. And yeah, yeah, we had more conversations of jams rather than actually talking to each other. Yeah. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, so it was, yeah, as Karam said, a way to communicate and get to know each other, really. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, you've just this year recorded an EP. Yeah. How's that, how's that been going? How, how yeah, how's good. We recorded it actually in uh, Cellar Tapes, well, most of it in Cellar Tapes, uh, released it end of last year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've just been playing those songs live and working on some new stuff. And but yeah, it was good. It was it was good to kind of finish something and put a I don't know. Like a, yeah, first point. Yeah. <laughs> say this is the first point, and yeah. we can move on. <laughs> and cellar tapes where we've done the session today, you actually use that as a rehearsal space as well, don't you? Yeah. So yeah. how do you find it? How do you find it working with cellar tapes? Yeah, it's great. Uh, really nice space. Mm -hmm.